Hey everyone, this is Ken and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on a color combination lock. Now the cool thing about this is the fact that you can literally choose anywhere from 2 to 15 different colors to actually make your locking mechanism. What I love about it is the fact that it's only one block wide per color segment, which really makes it extremely compact and you can put this pretty much anywhere. So let's begin. As you hit the button, you're going to notice right away that the colors are going to be changing. Now once you set your colors to the exact sequence of the code you chose, or the color pattern you chose, it's going to unlock the entire system. Now the color pattern I chose was green straight across, but you can literally choose over... I believe is 14.3 trillion different color combinations which to me is more than enough so check it out we got these two redstone lamps on both sides and the second we get this down to a green box they're gonna turn right on check it out Let's hit it one more time and voila look at this awesome and you can really connect that signal either to a door, a vault, any kind of mechanism, and it'll send the signal off amazingly. Now check this out. Once you're done, all you have to do is hit this reset button, and it's actually going to randomize the blocks. You see, it's going to completely shift all the blocks to pretty much whatever you feel like, and then once you hit the button, it's going to stop. Now this is a great way to reset your entire system so no one could really have the opportunity to guess what your code is. Because trust me, pressing each button a bunch of times will be time consuming. So check it out. Let me show you the back, show you all the rest on. <clears throat> it's pretty quite simple. Now I've managed to get this down to one block wide so they can all be right next to each other as you press the buttons and they won't interfere with each other. And that's kind of the whole point. We want to condense this and make this as compact as possible. Which is amazing. And what I love about it is the fact that you can really transmit the signal either to the left or the right of the design. See what I mean? So right there that redstone dust is on is transmitting the signal when the system is on lock. Now of course you're going to have to invert the signal. But this is just a great way to really set your whole system up to pretty much any direction. Now let me show you this one segment piece. Now you're probably wondering what those furnaces are. They're just more for a stationary solid block that can be moved, which really stabilizes the entire mechanism. And you can just see how compact it really is. Now for this tutorial, we're going to be doing a five digit, well five color combination. Now at this point guys, this is going to be the basic materials we're going to use for this build. You will be needing a block of your choice, some stairs, half slabs, Droppers, hoppers, some glowstone, but that's really completely optional. I mean, you really don't need it, but it really gives a nice look to the design. Redstone dust, redstone torch, repeaters, comparators, piston, sticky pistons, and you're going to need an unmovable block, okay? So you can use either a furnace or any other block that just can't be moved. Some power rails, rail activators, some glass a few buttons, and of course some torches for lighting. Now at this point guys, make sure you pause so you can really set this up. You want to have your layout all ready before you even start this build. So just pause at this point, just get your stuff organized and ready. Fantastic. Now at this point I want you to place a block right there and a, about one repeater going outwards and five pieces of redstone dust. Then in front of that repeater, place five repeaters. Then two redstone dust right there, leave a spot with a block there and a torch right in front of it with some redstone dust on the side of it. Then you're going to place a comparator going towards that block. And you're going to leave a two block gap with a comparator facing the other direction and you're going to delete those two blocks. Now what we're creating here is a timer. So you want to place two hoppers facing each other. And right where those two blocks are deleted, you're going to place one torch, or one redstone torch, right in front of those two blocks. Now this is great, because a lot of people like to use um, a redstone block. 
but this is just a more resource friendly way to get the same results. So place the piston there and there as well with a block right in front of it. Now for the timing mechanism for the reset system, you want to put at least a minimal of four blocks or more. Okay? Because it's going to create that nice pulse to really shuffle the entire combination lock. Then you're going to place a block right there and one on top and delete that. And you want to place a torch right in front. Because that's going to lock the piston itself. Then you're going to place four half slabs right across. And I want you to place a dropper going forward. A repeater, well, a comparator behind it with a dropper going upwards. Then place a, a dropper going the opposite direction with a hopper facing downwards. You see? Then right there in that block, I want you to place at least one piece of dirt. Fantastic, guys. All right, it's really coming together. Now place one piece of redstone dust there, and that's going to be your silent T flip flop. Now I want you to place five droppers facing inwards with hoppers going towards each dropper. Then you're going to place some comparators going outwards with a block right in front of it. Fantastic. So let's get our pistons. We're going to place some regular pistons right on top of that block. And then you're going to place one, two, and three blocks and stretch it from one end down to the other. Then over here, you're going to place one repeater there, leave a space, one there and there as well. Then place repeaters on the opposite end, and in between, you're going to place one piece of redstone dust. Now, this is just another format to really utilize, well, minimize the amount of repeaters you're going to use. Just make sure that the back row has full repeaters. Then place a torch right in front. And a block on top of it and on the side as well. Then place some torches right on top of that block. And over here, you're going to place a block there, one in the front, delete that, and stretch that right across. And you want to place some repeaters going towards each block. Fantastic. Now, at this point, we're going to create a 4x4 four four frame just so we can set up the pistons exactly right. Place your block there, stretch it right across. And you should have this kind of format. See a 4x4. Four four. Fantastic. Now place a piston there going inwards. And right underneath, you want to place a furnace. You see? What the furnace does, it prevents any of the blocks from moving out of place. See? Place one on the side. Then we're going to place two blocks there, delete that, and place a piston going inwards, and delete the block in the back. Then place a furnace right on top. Then over here, place two blocks on top just like so, delete the one in the middle, and a piston going downwards. And I want you to place one furnace on the side. Awesome. All right, so now that we got the actual layout of how all the pistons and furnaces are supposed to be at, you're going to delete that frame because that was just temporary just to help us configure this whole format. Now you're going to repeat that to each segment. Okay, so now once you've done that, I want you to place a block there, two more, delete that, place a torch there, two more times, delete that, and a torch there. So you're going to pretty much extend this about three blocks up with a torch in between. Then you're going to place some blocks right across from each one. And in between them, make sure you put those torches. They're very important. Trust me, it makes a world of difference, especially with the timing. Nice. Okay. Now, when you place three half slabs right across with a block in the middle and delete the one underneath, and you're going to extend that, of course, to each section so you can pretty much extend that to as many combinations as you have set up now guys bear in mind this gets very repetitive so we're going to be doing this back and forth quite often then we're going to do the same format with the repeaters and some redstone dust in between 
Now this is different. We're going to place each repeater on top on two ticks. Fantastic, guys. There's some torches in front of that block. Then you can place a half slab right in front. Delete that one. Put a block on top, one on the side. Delete that. Then we're going to extend it from one end right across. Now we're going to place some repeaters right on top and make sure each repeater again is on two ticks. And on the opposite end, you're going to place some torches. Fantastic. Now at this point, guys, I didn't explain this, but make sure you put some power rails and rail activators on top of those droppers all right so they got to be in a back and forth motion okay that's very important then once you've done that just cover that up and that as well and you're going to place a button right in front of that okay because what that does is it activates the dropper right underneath because those power rails on top it creates a quick update Fantastic. Now you can place some redstone dust, I mean redstone lamps underneath just so you can see the lighting. And for on top, I like to generally add some glowstone just to make it light up a little bit. It kind of brings out the color. And at this point, you want to make your own personal frame. So I like to add some stairs upside down and just kind of um, create a nice little framework around this. And guys, at this point, I want you to really just customize this to your own liking. I mean, feel free to pause and just kind of really make your own style of framing for this design. Now, once you've done that and you already finished doing that, you're going to place a block there, a half slab there, delete that, then two more on each side. Say one, two, three, and delete that. Now, of course, you're going to place that, of course, right across. And you're going to place some repeaters right on top with some redstone dust in front of it. Fantastic. Then you want to place a block, well, a half slab in front on both ends. And that's pretty much going to be your output. So you can either have it on this side or on this side, depending on how you want your mechanism. You see? Now we're, of course, going to extend that right across on this side on the interior as well. And what I want you to do is place some repeaters going forward, but behind it, just add one lever because these have to stay on continuously. Fantastic. Now, at this point, guys, I want you to set the blocks for your colors, okay? So just set up all your colors and you're going to place it right across from each other, okay? So they all want it to be at least even. So that when you shift them around, you don't get too confused, okay? So I'm going to fast forward this a little bit and um, just feel free to pause at this point just to really set that up because I know that could be a little tedious at times. Perfect. All right, now that you have all your colors and blocks in place, okay? We're going to delete this entire row on top. Okay, because you need at least one spacing so you can really start getting this thing moving. Now check it out. This is very important, guys. I want you to set up your code, okay? So my code is going to be blue, green, yellow, orange, and let's say red. Awesome. So that's going to be my code. That's going to be my personal code. So first set that up, right? Now, once you've done that, go in the back here and see where these repeaters are. You're going to delete the block right behind it. Now, you can either place some glass right behind it, which is cool. It's not bad. But the only problem with glass is you can really see it once it passes through when you're changing the code. So, if you don't like the way that looks, I want to really make this blend in. So, if you really want a different effect, just add a stair. Now make sure the stair, the back part of the stair is facing the front, you see? So that when it shifts past you, when you're seeing it, it looks like a regular block, so you would never know that. So my personal favorite, I personally like to use stairs, so I'm going to show you how that looks at this point. Because you can tell that it kind of locks off the signal, you see? It doesn't transmit the signal to the repeaters. And depending on where the output is at, always make sure you invert the signal with a torch. 
Fantastic. Now, of course, we're going to test the randomizer, or the recess system, as I like to call it. And you're going to notice right away that it's going to completely reset the entire system. And once you have the colors you want it to reset to, just press it off, and you're good to go. Anyway, guys, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you could please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you.